Welcome to Excel 2010 statistics video number 59. Hey, if you want to download this workbook, Business 210, Chapter 6, .xlsm, click on the link below the video. Hey, in this video, we want to talk about, continue our discussion of the normal bell curve. Last video, if I click on less than probability chart answer, we talked about how to create this chart, how to calculate probabilities below some x. So here the idea was here's our x, 14, and what's the probability below and what's the probability above. Now we created this chart and calculated probabilities using various functions. In this video, well, in this video we're going to concentrate on the upper end instead of the lower end. Now just like last video, we're using the same example we've been using for uh, many videos. Based on past data, estimate the percentage of scores on the next statistics test that will be 15 or more. Not only that, but what should we do if 37% on the current test get a score of 15 or more? Now, what we'll do in this example is we'll calculate, we're going to create our chart as always because it gives us a good visual. We're going to calculate our probabilities and calculate the actual probability of getting a score of 15 or more. And then we're going to compare that to this. All right, we're going to start just like last time by creating our chart. The last video, last two videos we saw in, in great detail how to set up a table like this and all sorts of charting tricks. We're going to do this just real quick here to get a visual picture. All right, here's all of our X's. And just to, as we have done in the last couple of videos, we're going to use our norm.dist function. We're going to put in our particular X, our mean. Our mean is 2, and we're going to lock that with the F4 key, comma, the standard deviation, lock it with the F4 key, and which cumulative, 1 for true or 0 for false. We're using, since we're calculating the height of the chart, we're using the probability mass or density function. So I'm going to put 0. Control Enter, and I'm going to double click and send this down. Now I want to Control down arrow to jump down to the bottom, Control down arrow. And uh, we went down to 24, just like we did last time. Now, in the last video, we added up some of these heights of the curve over a particular range to prove that it was not a probability. Another way to do that is to add up all of these. right? So Alt equals, and I think it's getting all the way to the top. And then Enter, and it absolutely is not, if these were probabilities uh, like with the binome dist, we would get one. Those aren't. That's just to show you that these are not probabilities of individual occurrences. They're actual heights of the curve. All right. Now we're also going to plot. We're going to plot this, but we're going to plot just like we did last video. Another little bit over here. We plotted the underneath curve and then some amount from a low end to an x. Now here we're going to plot the whole curve and then from the upper end to some point there. Just like last video, we'll do the if function. So I'm going to say if our particular x is greater than or equal to, last video we said less than, but anytime we find an x in this column greater than or equal to our 15, and I'm going to lock that with the F4 key, comma, then what do we want in this cell? The probability. Otherwise, please show blank. And blank, the syntax is double quote, double quote. It's actually a null. Uh, string, which means a, a, a text string of zero length. But for us, in a formula, that just shows nothing, right? So we have one of two things. Either we're going to show the probability or nothing. Then we're going to plot this whole column, and only the probabilities will show up. Control Enter. Notice it's blank. Double click and send it down. And you can scroll. And sure enough, when you get past, ding, 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 there it is. So they'll show all the way greater than or equal to. All right, so now we can plot our chart. I'm going to click there, Control Shift Down Arrow, go up to Insert Area and this. I'm going to immediately do two things. I want to add this extra column, and I want to change these uh, labels to our actual X values. Those are default values. So I'll go up to Chart Tools, Design, Select Data, Add. Series name is right there. Highlight that, remember always to delete it. Click in uh, G17, Control Shift Down Arrow, 
click OK. Now I'm going to edit. I'm going to scroll up. Actually, we could have done it from the bottom, too. If we were at the bottom, I could click there. Control Shift up arrow. Now it goes one too far. So I'm going to hold Shift and down arrow. Either way you do it. OK, click OK. Click OK. Now let's look at our chart. Oh, yeah, the other problem with the charting is they always, they're putting the chart at the bottom here. So now I'm going to click right there. It's looking good, though. There's our upper end, and now it will move this way, Ooh, back and forth, back and forth. And there's our X's. Now I'm going to click on the edge here, cut, either to right click cut or Control X. And then I'm going to scroll up and put it like right there. Now, in our last video, we, we showed all of the, the proper um, labels, and we did some fancy things to show the probability moving in the title, but I'm not going to do anything right here. I'm going to delete all of this. The only thing I want here, uh, you know, what do I want this? Maybe I do want this. Um, I don't want, no, I don't want anything. I just want a little picture, right? That's all I want here. So as I change, and again, this is like in, in some of the homework assignments we'll do, you sh you'll see off to the side that I have a bunch of these. But if it's an official chart you're going to print out, then you want all your labels and everything. But what's so cool about this is now I can type in 14, and it's just changing. It's just giving us a little visual of what's going on here. 20. We'll see nothing, right? Because 20 is way up here somewhere. All right, 15. How about 10? Oh, look at that. Now, we have our little chart. Now let's go ahead and try to answer our question. And we're going to use, we're going to look at our same four functions we did last time. Well, let's calculate z first. That's the number of standard devi deviations above or below. Our particular x is above, right? So when I subtract our mean, which is less than our particular x, we're going to get a positive, which means it's some number of standard deviations above. We divide it by our standard deviation, 1.5. Now, what is the probability of getting greater than or equal to x? And we want to throw the x into our function. So which function do we use? The norm.dist. The dist function, you throw in an x, it spits out the probability. Remember, it's always from the lower end to the upper end. That is the default for these functions. So what in the world are we going to do here? Let's just do it. Let's go. We're going to throw in a 15, and we know by default it goes from the very small, the negative infinity up to that x. Let's just see. Let's calculate that and see if we can amend the formula to get on the upper end. So I got that, comma, our mean, our standard deviation. And cumulative is 1. That means from negative infinity to our x that we throw in. And the x that we threw in, all right, so that's not what we want. That's everything from here to here. If we want the upper end, since everything is 1, we take 1 minus. Right, and so that's how you do it on the upper end. Now, what, what can we say about this, right, based on past data? So we mentioned this in a number of videos already in this chapter. The only reason we're allowed to use this, this uh, statistical technique and the bell curve is because the actual population data set tended to have a plotted distribution that looked bell-shaped, right? So this is uh, for a particular instructor. We have the population data. We know that their grading is tends to be bell curve. So what do we say here? Based on past data, it would be reasonable to assume that about 7% of all the scores on the next test will be 15 or more, right? If we run a test and get 37, is that unusual? Yes, that's unusual. So 37% all of a sudden get above 15. We would need to investigate why. We don't know why at all. We just know that that's unusual. And this statistical technique is great because it can let us know something's going on here. Let's go investigate. You know, and it could be a, lots of reasons. We got uh, a lot of really. Um, statistically smart students all in one class. The teacher, uh, you know, had this great insight to teach better for this quarter. Um, uh, the test was too easy. Who knows? It could be all sorts of reasons. But that's the beauty of this technique is we can then, uh, it, it prompts us to go and investigate. Now, 
here's norm dot dist. What do we do if we have our z instead? One minus, of course, and then we go norm, and it's dot s. There's two of them. Dist, remember dist, you throw in a, in this case, a z, or in the case of this function up here, an x. You throw in a z or an x, it spits out the probability. So it's s. That s means standard normal. So we have to throw in a z. Remember, this function's different than earlier versions. In earlier versions, it only had a z. Now we have cumulative, which is great. We can plot the chart or do our cumulative from negative infinity to our z. So there we put a 1. We're going to get the same answer. Now, just to um, show you the inverse. Both of these are dist. And we saw the inverse, and we saw a great example last video. But let's remind ourselves of what the inverse. The inverse, you throw in a probability, and the function will spit out either an x or a z. So let's see how to spit out an x. And I just want to take this exact probability and, and throw it in here. And it better give us the 15. So it's norm, remember they all start with norm, dot, and then inverse. It asks for the probability. I'm going to take this probability. We're doing this just to see how this works, right? Throw in this probability. It better give us a 15, comma, the mean, standard deviation, and I bet you it's 15. 9. Well, 9, it can't be 9. Nine's way down here. Oh, what did we do? We forgot. All of the functions, the dists and the inverse, go from the negative infinity up to some point. Oh, but wait a second. I just took this probability up here, 6, and threw it in. So remember, if, it's, if we give it 6, it thinks we're, we're going from here up to some, you know, like right about there, right? So what do we really want? Not 6, 1 minus. Remember, we throw in the big probability up to here, which is 1 minus that little bit, and boom. Now, what about the z equals? Well, it's going to be our, they all start with norm, and this one's dot s dot inverse. And here, all it needs is the probability to spit out the z. So 1 minus r, and it spits out the z. How would we get the x value from that? Of course, you would say, we know it's a z, and we know the mean and the standard deviation. So it's positive, right? So I'm going to take my mean. And how, the meaning of z is how many standard deviations above or below. So we add, because it's above, standard deviation. Oh, and multiply. How many? Times 1.5. Now, this was just to kind of see how it works. Really, you would do something like this. You'd say, uh, how do we get into the top? 5%. Um, and then you would say equals norm. And I'm going to do the inverse here. right? So here's the probability. Uh, 1 minus comma the mean, the standard deviation, and boom. So normally, you don't just go from the probability you just calculated from an x, because you already have an x, right? But that was just to see how these work. We went, we went from these back to 15. But normally, you're given a, some probability, and you say either above or below. Now, this is above. That's the score. If you want to be in the top 5%, you have to get uh, a 15.289. Now, what if you wanted on the lower end, right? So this is the upper. OK, so what score? Oh, this would be terrible. I'm going to be in the bottom 5%. Uh, what score would I have to get? This is going to give me a score that is the marking point. Either this score or lower would throw me into the bottom 5%. So norm dot inverse, because we're going from the probability. And here, we don't do 1 minus, because we're really talking about the area just right there. Comma mean, comma standard deviation, and boom. Well, 8.7 or less would give us, uh, would throw us into the lower 5% category. All right, that's uh, all about the upper end. We saw how to use, create the chart again using our norm.dist and the zero.
That's the height of the curve. We saw how to use our if again for the second time. We plotted it. We took just the picture this time and deleted all the other stuff. We saw no, 1 minus norm.dist. That's when you're doing the upper end, and that 1 for cumulative. We saw the s. That's the standard normal. That's when you have a z. And then we did the inverse. The inverse, you throw in the probability, it throws out the x. And again, the standard normals is all about the z. So if we throw in the probability, it spits out the z. And then we call, saw a couple other examples where we start with a probability on the upper or lower end, and what is the marking point. All right, in our next video, we will do between. And this will become uh, very important when we do uh, or all of these three examples, above, below, and between, will become important in hypothesis testing. All right, we'll see you next video.